Hello good people of YouTube. With the holiday season fast approaching, have you got that special someone in your life that just happens to be a bit of a hairy arsed outdoorsy bastard? Don't know what to get him. Don't want to go through the expense of some of the higher end camping equipment that is out there. Well this video is for you. You can make them a prized possession, one they will use on many a trip, literally from shit you find in a bin. So today, we are gonna be making some camping stoves out of the stuff in front of us. Um, the tools you need, hacksaw, to be honest, the only reason I'm gonna be using the hacksaw is to get rid of the plastic off that. Braddle, any sharp pokey thing to do, a little floor tack, thumb tack, whatever. Something to mark with. Pliers, they're handy, not really necessary, but I use them. Scissors, which is really, apart from the hammer, the only thing you need. Some, uh, what's it called, roof insulation. And some metal shite. So I'm gonna start off making the easiest one first, which will be the fancy feast stove. For the fancy feast stove, you will need a small cat food tin, um, cheap and nasty, you get them anywhere. The reason it's called a fancy feast stove, I believe that in America, the cat food is called fancy feast. Over here, this is Purina Gourmet. You'll see them in every single supermarket. And a small tin that will fit inside. This one is a tomato puree tin. Obviously empty them out, clean them out. And let's get started. Now, with this, you're gonna to wanna to keep this top rim. So if you've got one of the can openers that takes the top completely off, that's not really much cop. That's the can opener I've got, so I'm using an old army issue tin opener. I'm just gonna take that off and smooth the edges around a little. Careful not to cut yourself, let them go in a bin. Pliers, just run around the outside, getting rid of any sharp edges. Lovely job. Do the same, you normally have a little lip in that because they are pull off lids, do the same there. That is as near as damn it. Place with the lip side down and then mark about a thumb width up from the uh, top of this can. I'm making this look a lot more difficult than you have to. Take your scissors and cut round the line. I know it looks like I'm doing this cack handed, but I'm doing it so you can see. Try not to poke your eye out. Have a look for any high spots, which there are some. Beautiful. That should sit in there like so. On the bit you've just cut, cut three small triangles. Quite evenly spaced. show you that. And 
and with your sharp pointy thing up near the lip punch up a hole that's just an air hole no specific size as long as it's there you're golden and then obviously again flatten it off on the other end that is basically your stove 90% complete to finish off take some of your insulation and you poke it in around the outside making sure that your inner can is central once you've got it central you can put more and more stuff in you don't want to stuff it so it's rock hard in there but you do want it so it will securely hold the can in the middle This stuff acts as a wick for your fuel to give you a nice even burn. Now I've got to say, this stove in particular is by far my favorite camping stove. Um, it always finds a place in my backpack, whether I'm doing a bushcrafty type camp, a hike, um, a, a wild camp, a stealth camp, all that sort of shizzle. I've always got one of these with me. The bonuses to this, as you will see in a moment, is that one, you don't need a pot stand for it. And two, as soon as you lit it, you can use it. Whereas these others take a little bit to prime. Just go around there, a little bit more. There we have it, one stove complete. As you can see, you can pick it up from the top, that's not falling out. I'll do that just to even some stuff around, give it another little pat, and we are golden. The fancy feast stove out of stuff you find in a bin. Next stove we're going to make is the penny stove. You will not get a simpler stove to make. Right, what to do here? Let's use that, shall we? Yes, let's. What you need to do on the bottom of both cans, if you mark a line going right the way round, Make sure obviously they're empty, because it'd be silly otherwise. Mark a line the same height, right way round, both cans. Get your trusty wife scissors. Lucky she don't watch my channel, because she'd have my nuts for earrings. Cut into that, and cut around the line. Get rid of a chunk of it first. After I've cut these, I'll wash them out proper.
Once again, watch out for the sharp bits. Second can. Just roughly tight at the start, and then we'll finish off. Pigs ear out there, but it won't matter. All right, I'll just go and rinse these out quick. Figure out what you want to be your top and what you want to be your bottom. I prefer red to that color. So, with your pliers, and you could do this with the scissors, get up just a little tiny way in and give it a little twist. And then you do that all the way around the can and what that does, that pinches it all together so it will slot inside easier. I'll fast forward this bit, it'll be as dull as dishwater otherwise. So as you can see now, the top is narrower than the bottom. A little bit of roof insulation shoved inside. Now the reason I do this on this tank, you don't need to. The reason I do it is when you fill it up with your fuel, if you knock it over, it won't spill. Um, you can use carbon felt and uh, even cotton wool in these. Obviously not in that, you can't use cotton wool because it's flammable. But this burns from the, these, these? But this burns from the outside with the um, expelling of the gas, not the inside, so you should be fine. Um, yeah, use whatever you want. Slot that in there. A little bit fiddly, but once it's in, give it a twist and push down. Trying to keep it nice and square and even. Until you end up with something like that. Right, now on the top of the can, you want to put five, five holes, which I'll show you, they're slightly larger than the holes you're gonna put around the outside. This is for filling it up. So you get your stabby thing, push down in the center, and then just four all the way around it. They have got to be small enough that they can be covered with a penny, hence the name penny stove. Give them a little wiggle, don't have to be perfect on these, and hopefully there you can see it. And then around the outside, you want 16 evenly spaced holes. Now the way I do this, everyone is different. I will take a line, make a little hole, I always tip them up a bit, go dead opposite that, Make a hole, ping her up, go halfway in between those two holes. Guess what? I need a sharper stabby thing. So they're the size of the holes. Once again, halfway in between. Boosh. Then halfway, 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 halfway. That'll make eight, and again. You don't have to have 16 holes. You can happily have, oh, that was a bit big. You can happily have eight holes. It will work absolutely fine. I just prefer 16, because it looks pretty.
Same again, just in between those dots you've now just made. Some of these holes I've put in here are a bit big. So when you see the flame pattern, this isn't gonna be the best penny stove you're ever gonna see, but it will work. Normally for this, I'd use a thumbtack. And thumbtacks work very, very well. So a little bit dented and a bit ham-fisted. As you look around there, there's your jets for the stove. Second one, done. You will need also with that, which I can't seem to find at the moment. A penny to pop over. So there is two stones done. This one is a little bit trickier, but not a lot. First things first, you need to remove this plastic. And this is the hardest job out of all of it. See what I mean? It's got a couple of little clips around the outside. Around the outside, around the outside. But, Coming in you. There we go. Now, just to make sure the can don't blow up in your face, you need to pierce the top with the pokey thing. Hear that? Just to make sure any of the last remaining gas is out. Now what we've got to do is either use your pliers, peel off this lid, or just cut it off with the hacksaw. I think I'm gonna cut it off with a hacksaw. Pull out the gubbins and the innards. We'll give that a little sand off in a moment. Chuck away the gash. Now where you need to measure with this is you can see where it starts to curve. So you want to come about an inch after where it curves. As luck would have it for breeze, as a blue line that runs right the way around. So what you can do, once again, you can use your scissors, I believe, I'll soon find out, and cut around that. Same with the bottom. After you've cut that out, measure it up to the bottom, you want this to be slightly smaller than the bottom. Tell you what I'll do, I'll saw it again. Like so. You can trim that up so it's nice and square. with the scissors and as you can see the scissors work absolutely finely
All right then. So now you've got them. Take your pen. Place it on top of the bit you've just cut. And mark. Where are we looking? There we are. Then you can just cut round there. To that line. With this being a slightly thicker material, be a bit careful. Once again, I know it looks cack handed, it's just you can see. Dip down a bit there. Not to worry, it won't matter crap. So there you have your two parts. Just get rid of that. I'm going to chuck away the rubbish and give these a little clean out. You will also need a little bit of sandpaper. Nothing too drastic. Just go around taking off any burrs. Same again. Now all three of these stoves will work off nail varnish remover, METS, methylated spirit that is, not the uh, stuff, the, uh, the pillar juice. Although if you took that, you might think they work. Right, now again here, what you can do is get your saw out and make a couple of little indentations. I'm going to use the same process as I did on the Fancy Feast and just cut a couple of little triangles. This will enable the fuel to travel into the chamber. Which is all you need. Right, then that goes inside of there. I'm only using this because I don't want to damage my, uh, my wife's tablecloth. And you can either push down, or as I'm going to do, hammer it down with a bit of wood on side it, or, I don't know, get a fat sibling to sit on it. I'm going to use another DIY project just to cover that. And give it a tap, a tap, a tap. Now, as you can see here, I can see I'm slightly going off a kilter. So all I need to do is put that on and make sure I'm hammering on that side to bring it back round and level. Nearly there. If you look on the inside, we're nearly at the bottom.
and that will do. Now as you can see, it's not level at the top at all. So I'm just going to take the scissors and trim round so they're both the same. When that is done, quick sand, quick sand. Now, what you will find as you push that down, you will end with a lip. A little ridge it's going to be hard to see on the camera that ridge is where the bottle has started to slope down so with your stabby thing wherever I'll put that there it is same as with the penny stove I'm going to go round underneath that ridge and put in 16 holes now with this one because it's slightly different I put in my hole not too far because you don't want to pierce both bits of tin And then I just make a little jet pointing upwards. So there's the first one. Second one in, just make that jet point upwards. Halfway in between. Pop her in make the jet point upwards. And it's the same all the way around. Do you get 16 holes? Now you can take your time with these, and I've made many where they're actually really neat looking. I'm, I'm rushing through this just to make the video and get it out there. Yeah, you can make them look really neat, um, and almost like a professional job. I'm a bodger. Once again, the good thing with these is you don't need a pop stand. The penny stove is the only one we've made today where you will need a pop stand. Just tell you, oh, that's a big one. Never mind, still work. Just tell you quickly how these work. Basically what happens is, when you put your fuel inside and you light it, that will start to boil. The fuel that has seeped through into the jacket will turn into a gas. The gas will ignite like a gas hob. And you cook on it, same with a penny stove, and that is just burning on the outer rim. But you'll see that in a moment. You will see on all of these stoves where I am rushing it, I've made a couple of the holes bigger. It won't stop it working in any way, shape or form. It just means that one of the jets will be bigger. What you can do as well, if you want to be more accurate, what I've done in the past, I've put a piece of paper around, laid that paper out and just dissected that. So in half, in half, in half, in half, there gives you your 16 spots. That looks like, It's about done. So there you have your fancy feast, penny stove, and that is a sort of white box knockoff. Um, what I'll do now, I'll transfer them over onto the hob. So I've got the fan going. I'll show you how quickly they light, 
and then I'll time each one to see how long it takes to boil a cup or a pint of water. Um, yeah, I'll show you also how to light them. Wicked! Right then, first up is the Fancy Feast. I'm gonna be adding 30 ml of meths. I'll be timing to see how long it takes to uh, bloom and be usable. See how long it takes to boil one pint of water. It's a heavy cast pan, so please bear that in mind. Oh, just spilled bleeding mess down myself. So, 30 ml of mess in there. Let her salt in. Light. Start. Now, as soon as it lights around, this is the first time it's uh, been used. But as you can see, that is already working now. And once that's wicked, that was 10 seconds exactly. Oh, better put the water in, eh? Pint of water. And we're away. Hopefully you can see the flame pattern that this thing gives off. It's an even all round flame, handles the wind really well. Awesome bit of kit. Right, I'm calling that. Nine minutes 15 to a rolling boil for a pint of water in a cast iron pan. Please bear the cast iron pan bit. Um, if that was aluminium, it would be a damn sight shorter. And now we'll just wait to see how long that 35 mil of water takes until it's completely burnt out. Right, I'm gonna call that there because it's no longer a usable flame really. At 19 minutes, 20 seconds, and that is on 30 mil of uh, fuel. What you can do is that tin is an 85 gram tin, so it'll hold about 80, 85 grams or millimeters, milliliters of fuel. So obviously you can double up on that 35 mil, it's gone now. So yeah, 19 and a half minutes, give or take. That ain't bad going, I think you'll agree. Um, I'm gonna let that cool down and change the stoves over. And warm to the touch within less than a minute. Sorry, cool to the touch, just in case. Right. Next up, we have the penny stove. Now to prime the penny stove, you fill it up. Once again, Same amount of water, uh, fuel. A tiny little bit spilt around the edge just to prime it, because the penny stove does need priming. And we shall begin. As you can see, the jets have started to work, and that is at 23 seconds. It can take longer than that when you're out in the field. I'm having to use a pot stand, because obviously you can't use a pot stand with the penny stove. Pint of water, and we're off. Now hopefully you'll be able to see in there Exactly how the jets look, just like a gas stove. You have a look at the jets there, they're just like a gas stove. Now, the reason for the priming of this and why you spill it on the outside is you've got to heat up the alcohol on the inside. Obviously, with the fancy feast, there's absolutely no need to do that. You're lighting the uh, material inside, the fuel inside, that acts as a wick and it comes straight up. Um, because 
you haven't got much gap between the flame and your saucepan. That's why you can't put anything directly on top. You'll just extinguish the flames. There are ways and means that you can do it. You can um, put a couple of temp pegs across or a couple of bolts across, which will raise it up or just stick the temp pegs in the ground, you're golden. Or make yourself out of an old wire coat hanger a pot stand. It's, it's easily done. Um, but yeah, so you put that around the outside, you light it and that will then make the liquid inside evaporate, come out the jets and ignite like a gas hole. That's why you have to pry it. Right, I'm gonna call that a rolling boil at six minutes 30. So it appears to deliver the heat quicker, but I'm pretty sure it won't last as long. Um, if you're cooking fry ups or anything on the fancy feast, it gives you a nice even heat. I just love that stove. These are brilliant to make with the kids. All of them are good to make with the kids. Um, and they're very, very, very effective. That has replaced my Trangia when I go out and about camping. Um, I've used the same one now for about a year and a half, two years. Never let me down. So now we just need to see how long that will go for. Will it beat the, I think, what, 19 and a half minute mark, whatever it was? I'll be amazed if it does. in its death throes at 10 minutes and 34 seconds. Now you can make that last longer by having smaller holes um, for the jets. So it doesn't chuck out as much gas as I uh, did make a few bigger ones, but you've still got your boiling water. Uh, 10 minutes, once again, is more than enough to make a cup of tea. One thing to be very cautious of here, and I've seen a fair few people do it. I know it sounds like common sense, that penny is unbelievably hot and will be for a while. The stove itself, not so much, but yeah, I wouldn't be touching that penny in a hurry. Knock it onto the floor, let the ground absorb the heat. I'm gonna go cool this down, swap the stoves over, and we'll have a look at the next one. Right, this one is one of my personal favorites, um, purely because of the mechanics of it. Same principle as the penny stove. Oh, that wouldn't have been good, would it? 30 mil again, I keep saying 35 I think. It's all the same measurement, I believe it's 30 mil. Inside, to prime this, all you do is light the middle, he says. And then you'll see the jets appear around here when she's good to go. Oh. Stopwatch on, always helps. Bite the water. You can hear the crackling now as the mess starts to boil. And then pretty soon you will see these jets all come into life. Generally takes give or take a minute. As you can see, they've now come into effect, and that is at 51 seconds. We can now place our pot on top. And again, I will bring you in to show you the flame. Again, you can see the coverage, no pot stand needed, crappy little stove. Once again, you can be much neater with the holes around the outside. I could have made it slightly shorter, um, but it's working. You know, you, you saw how quickly I made it. I wasn't taking any time. I wasn't really measuring just with my thumb. They're that simple. Um, adapt it the way you want to adapt it. You're golden. Cracking little stoves, these. I've got a feeling this is probably gonna run for about 12 minutes or so, um, and probably take a similar time, six minutes to get it to the boil. Soon find out, won't I? Um, I don't know, obviously. As I've just made it, but going off the other ones. Now, all you need with these, uh, you could use like a hairdresser spray bottle, you know, the aluminum bottle that curves in at the end. 
um, a SIG bottle, you can cut the top and bottom off a SIG bottle, all exactly the same. I've used SIG bottle ones, they're obviously a lot heavier duty than that. I've had one of these um, made out of a, a weak aluminium hairspray bottle and it's lasted me for, in fact, I've never had one die on me. I've given plenty away, never died. So, stove number three. Right, I'm gonna call that at six minutes exactly. And would you look at that? It's gone out. So, we've got six minutes on that one. Once again, a lot of that to do is with the construction. Some of the other ones I've used last a lot, lot longer. It died at six minutes, just as it brought it to a rolling boil. Um, once again, it is a cast iron pot. That is something you've really got to take into account. Um, and I have got a couple of big holes in there. Small holes, angled up in the right direction with the right size um, tin. You will get a good 10, 12 minute boil out of that. Well, just purely from experience, Maybe this wasn't the best example, but for a pint of water to a boil in six minutes, you can fit a lot, lot more than 30, 35 mil of stuff in there. You'll probably get 60, 70 mil in there. So straight away, you're doubling your time if needed. But all of them work, make your own mind up. My two favorites are that one and that one, but I do like these because I make them with my kids. They're so easy for the kids to make. We've gone out, we've cooked bacon in the woods with them and all that, all that jazz. There you go. You've got three homemade alcohol mess burners for the price of rummaging in a sack of rubbish. Any questions, leave them down below. There's plenty of other videos out to do them. I'm a lasher, what can you say? Ta-da!